Welcome back to the Swear Wolves. I'm Brett. I'm behind on posting episodes and I apologize. Life gets in the way sometimes and shit happens. Today's episode is 246, Ant-Man and the Shape. In this episode, we talk about Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Now, I had never seen this movie in, in its entirety. I'd seen parts of it. Obviously, I'd seen reviews of it. I knew the history that uh, it was considered the worst Halloween movie of all time, but I never had watched it in its entirety. We also talk about the fact fact that uh, we are ending the podcast or at least putting it on temporary hiatus as of episode 250. So the episode that's, that I'm downloading right now is 246. 247 is already out. I'm going to download that in probably right after I do 246. Now I am still going back and putting the old episodes. I'll be putting them on the YouTube channel and I may or may not do intros. It just depends. Like if I get behind and that's the reason why I hadn't done this is because I wanted to do an intro. You know, life gets in the way and I couldn't get recording anything and tell you why. Re you, you want to know why? Probably not. You're probably like, just play the fucking episode because I don't really care about your personal life. And that's fine. You can skip ahead. I've been building a catio. Yeah. That's, that's what my life has been at right now. In fact, this is an injury I got right here. Uh, to the perfect finger. I've been building a catio for obviously for my cats. That's been taking up a lot of my time. Yeah. I built a catio. <laughs> That being said, I do want to do another video that I want to do, uh, actually, probably when the podcast ends, uh, maybe I'll start doing some more review videos of uh, collectibles and things, because I do want to review uh, and show my my room here and show all the different figures that I have and uh, the, the different collectibles and whatnot uh, in more depth. I just got two new cabinets. So that was another thing I did. I drove down to Ikea, which is not close to me, but I drove down to Ikea and I got uh, two new Detolf cabinets and I have my figures displayed, some of my figures displayed in there. That video will be coming out in a little while. Anyway, for right now, enjoy episode 246, Ant-Man and the Shape. Welcome back to the Swear Wolves. I'm Brett. I'm David. David. Hi, Brett. Hi. How are you? The countdown starts. Four, three, two, one. <laughs> uh, this is our, this is our uh, final five. Yeah. Top five. Top five movies we've never reviewed. Counting down. Coming in at number five. <laughs> you won't believe number one. Um, yeah, so let's just get into it. All Unless right, you got shit. some news. Do you got a news of anything? I don't got news of anything. Uh, no, I don't think so. I'll be at a couple of shows coming up soon, but we can talk about that next week because I think by the time this comes out it'll it'll still be like a week away yeah okay we chose uh halloween the curse of michael myers now this doesn't complete the whole halloween array of films but it definitely completes this trilogy right the four five and six right. we just did five a couple like a month ago or so <laughs> yeah right? it was still pretty fresh in my mind yeah it was like yeah. a month ago i personally like i'd seen parts of halloween I'm just going to call it Halloween six, right? Cause I yeah. don't like saying the curse of Michael Marsh. Uh, I, I personally never seen the entire movie straight through. Oh wow. Now you have. And now I have, but I had seen clips of it. Obviously I knew Paul Rudd was in it. I knew Luma. I knew uh, Donald Pleasant died during the filming of it. Cause I remember when it came out on video, I was working at a video store when this movie came mm -hmm. out on video and uh, I had a friend who went Bootsy. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, oh, Donald Pleasance died during the filming of this. Like, this is pre-internet. Well, I guess the internet was around, but it wasn't like... It was the shitty internet. Yeah, it was the shitty internet. <laughs> <laughs> but he was like... So he, Bootsy would always tell me like little facts about shit. And I was like, how do you know that? And I, I don't know. He could have made shit up for all I know. But in this case, he wasn't. He was a prolific liar. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Donald Pleasance died during the filming of this and Kinda. they had to like go back and reshoot some stuff and it just doesn't make sense. And he was telling me about it. And so then I was like, then I'm not going to fucking watch it because I didn't like <laughs> I didn't like five that much. And even back then. Yeah. And, and you're like, oh, uh, six is a mess. Awesome. Where do I sign? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it wasn't until H2O came out that I was like, OK, I'm back in on this. Right. And I went and saw that in the theater. Yeah, same. Like, I didn't see this one in the theater. I probably saw this one around the same time I saw H2O also. Same thing. I rented it. I, and I was like the right age to go see this in the theater. But I, I'm guessing, I, I don't remember this being in the theater. I'm guessing it was in the theater for about four minutes. It, yeah, it was brief. Because I remember when it came out, I was still, it's funny, I looked at the date. It came out the day before my 15th birthday. So I was probably like, mom and dad, can, can we see Halloween? And they said no. <laughs> Because you're, you're just a boy. If you were 17, you'd go see it on your own. But you're not. 
Yeah. So the curse of Michael Myers, you're right. It came out September 29th, uh, 1995. That would have been a cool birthday movie to go see. That would have been cool. For you. But alas, if you were my kid, I would have taken you to see it. <laughs> Thanks dad. Speaking of taking kids to see a movie, you know what movie I'm probably going to watch tonight because mm. it's actually on demand is the evil dead rise. Dude, it's funny you say that. I'm actually going to the movies tonight to see it in a theater. Well, my daughter, who is 10, mind you, she'll be 11 here in a month or so. Two months, I guess. I know how long, when her birthday is. <laughs> two months. Uh, but anyway, uh, she's 10. She's She keeps begging me to take her to go see this movie. It's a cool kid. She's a cool kid. The problem is, for me, David, is that taking a family of four out to the movies, it's like, very expensive. I almost have to get a second mortgage on my house because <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's like after the movie ticket, the movie tickets are one thing, but then it's like, oh, we want popcorn, we want right. candy, we want, you know, and I'm not going to like deny my kids food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not cheap. <laughs> At least in public. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here's a stick of gum, kid. <laughs> yeah, chew on this. Here's a twig. I have one piece of fruit stripe gum. You have to make it last an hour and a half. <laughs> Split it. Sorry. <laughs> tear it. Tear it in half. Did you ever? Did your grandma ever tear gum in half and give yes. you like that was a, Is that very a grandma, grandma thing? It's a very grandma thing to it's do. My grandma a full would stick. My grandma would either have trident, which is small, or like anyway. dentine. Yes, yeah. my grand. <laughs> yes, is that a grandparent thing too? It is. Yeah, the little it's little like, squares. Yeah. Oh, here, have some dentine. It's like here, half a half a dentine, and it was always cinnamon flavored. Dentine sounds like something the dentist prescribes you to yeah. chew. You know, like here, have some here, dentine. Have some dentine. It'll build up your enamel. Yeah, your poly grip. Did, did uh, Grandma always give you cinnamon flavored dentine? Yeah, of course. Yep. But you want to know something? Cinnamon flavored gum is actually the best gum to chew because I think I've heard this again. It probably wasn't from Bootsy, but another person that was probably lied to me. But <laughs> cinnamon flavored gum. Um, helps with the breath, ah. bad breath, the best. There you so go. like big red. That's why I drink fireball whiskey instead of water. Yep. Fireball whiskey. For my breath. Big red <laughs> gum. <laughs> Fucking uh, Cinnaburst. Remember that shit with the flavor crystals? Yeah. Yeah. I do remember that. Flavor crystals. Try to get away with it in my class. <laughs> <laughs> that commercial. <laughs> I hated those commercials. Oh, they were the worst. <laughs> oh, fuck. All right, September 29th, 1995. So, David, you were 15 years old. Well, almost. You were 14 years old, tugging on your pud. What <laughs> movie <laughs> What movie was the number one movie in the box office uh, the, the day that this came out? Um, I feel somewhat confident on this because it was another movie that I... It's a movie I love that I picked yeah. uh, that yeah. I did not see in the theater, but I also wanted to see... And much like many movies around this time that my parents never let me watch anything that was rated R, I got yeah. to hear about it from kids at school that saw it. Uh, but I'm going to yeah. go with uh, the David Fincher flick, Seven. You're correct. I did see this movie in the theater. You rat bastard. It was fucking awesome. It is fucking now, awesome. here's the thing. The Curse of Michael Myers comes out. Seven had come out the week before. It's like when Seven comes out, everybody's like, this is a fucking it's a thriller slash horror, you know, kind of like yeah. a, eh, cusp of, of horror, right? Serial killer movie. Like these two movies were made at the same time. Like <laughs> I understand that like movies can be better than the other, but it's like one is far superior than the <laughs> other, like in quality and oh, yeah, everything. everything. Seven's awesome. Seven is one of the best movies of the mid 90s. Yeah. I, and I didn't like it for a long time. Uh, really? Not that I didn't like the movie. I didn't. I didn't like the ending. Oh. I was very pissed off. Uh, spoiler alert: Gwyneth Paltrow gets her head chopped off <laughs> and so, put in a box. <laughs> this movie is what twenty eight years old at this point. I think it's okay. I actually um, really like the ending. I mean, it's very sad. I just love that it's a fucking downer. I remember watching it going. I just got pissed off that. that I mean, she was pregnant, right? Yeah. She gets killed. Brad Pitt's all, what's in the box? You know, um, <laughs> you know, I was very satisfied that that Kevin Spacey got got his uh, yeah. comeuppance, but at what cost? And I was like, but why? Gwyneth Paltrow didn't do anything. So his whole motive, his whole M.O. was that he killed people that were sinners, right? The seven deadly sins. But then he killed Gwyneth Paltrow and her unborn child. But that was the point. That was his sin. He coveted. But then it's a then it's a conundrum, my friend, because <laughs> Hey, take it up with Fincher. <laughs> well, he didn't write the script, did he? I don't know. The thing about it is, is like he only killed people that sinned, but then he killed this person so he could be the sinner. I don't know. I I, I was not happy with that. 
Uh, it's a good movie, though. Nowadays, I listen to Gwyneth Paltrow talk, and I'm like, oh, kill her. God. <laughs> put her head in a box. <laughs> No, no, I'm not at all. Not at all. I'm just I love kidding. Goop. You got a whole collection of her vagina scented candles around your house, I'm I sure. Do. do I smell them all the time? <laughs> it smells just like her vagina. Yep. I go I go skiing just so she can run into me. <laughs> um all right. Uh what was the number one uh, song? You want a hint on this? Sure. I'll give you a hint. I got a song was, written it, down, but yeah, go ahead, give me a hint. Okay, is the song you have written down featured in a movie? Ooh, I'm not sure. Well, you would definitely be sure because this song was featured in a movie. But go ahead, what's your what's your guess? Damn it! Uh, I went with the song. Do you remember "Candy Rain" by Soul for Real? <laughs> no. <laughs> the, My what? love, do you ever dream of candy no. coated rain? No. David. As I walk through the valley of the oh, shadow of shit. death, I take a look at my life and realize there's there's nothing, nothing left. left. <laughs> oh, Coolio, R.I.P. Buddy, Gangsters Paradise. Yeah, Gangsters Paradise by Coolio featuring L.V. I don't know if L.V. stands for something, but he was probably the person that sang. <laughs> Living in the gangsters. He's paradise. all sweating. <laughs> Did you ever see uh, Dangerous Minds? Probably. I've never seen that movie. I went to uh, NAU. Mm-hmm. Uh, right around, well, right around this time, I was up at NAU. Ooh, you lumberjack, you. I was uh, for just a short period of time. But I went at NAU, and one of the girls in my theater class went to the high school that Dangerous Minds is based on. Oh, man, was she hardcore? She wasn't. She was a, a normal person, but she was like talking about that teacher that Michelle Pfeiffer plays. And she's like, well, first of all, she's not as pretty as Michelle Pfeiffer in real life, <laughs> but, and she like just wears like weird clothes. That's what. That's all. She just been really weird about me. Like, so what's Michelle Pfeiffer like? And she's like, No, no, that was a movie. And you're like, What? I'm like, But you met Michelle Pfeiffer, right? I'm pretty sure you met Michelle Pfeiffer. Do you guys talk about Scarface at all? I have a copy of Grease Two on VHS. Can you ever sign this for me? I have a vinyl cat suit that I'd love for her to to sign. (laughs) Michelle Pfeiffer, what happened to her? Where is she? Has she been in movies recently? I haven't seen her in. It's been a long time. She's probably doing stuff all over the place, and we're just so fucking myopic. Yeah, we probably. Don't know. Maybe after this podcast ends, we'll discover all of the, the films she's been doing. Oh, Ant-Man. She's in Ant-Man. Ah, uh, okay. With Paul Rudd. Oh, my God. Oh, all comes full circle. Let's get back to this. Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, <laughs> Halloween 6, written by Daniel Ferens. Directed by Joe Chappelle. Joe, uh, Joe Chappell? Chappelle? I don't know. He directed... Um, Two documentaries that we both really like. Uh, Never Sleep Again, which is the the Nightmare on Elm Street Street documentary. And Crystal Lake Memories. Oh, no shit. I did not know that. Now, there was a book that he didn't write the book, but he wrote and directed the... um, Yeah, those are both really good documentaries. Dude, I've seen Crystal Lake Memories. Well, portions of Crystal Lake Memories a bunch. And they're both really long. Especially Crystal Lake Memories is the really long one, right? It's like 13 hours long. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's one every now and again. I'll put it on in the background. If, it, if I'm working from home and I don't have like any meetings, just as like definitely. background fodder. Yeah. Uh, it's a good one for that. Um, and, and Never Sleep Again is a pretty long one, too. It's yeah. probably like three hours. Something like those that. and um, In Search of Darkness. Oh, those are great. Those are great to fall asleep to, by the way. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> listening to people talk about horror movies that they like uh music by Al- alan howarth i probably just reused his his musical cues, uh there's some right? stuff that's different like this is one there... i notice is definitely more driving there's like mm. electric guitars and stuff do you think he arranged that or do you think they just i got... would think so i don't, know, I don't know produced by paul freeman stars dental uh dental donald pleasance as dr sam loomis again paul rudd this is in his introducing and starring Paul Rudd is what it says movie. at the beginning. Uh, now, this movie wasn't released before Clueless. It was released after Clueless, okay, but, but it was filmed, filmed, before. filmed before Clueless. So he was uh, he was a rising star. This was his first uh, film that he was in, that he starred in. Uh, Paul Rudd as Tommy Doyle. Uh, he was credited as Paul Stephen Rudd. Oh, so proper. Yeah. Uh, George P. Wilbur, RIP, just died uh, at the beginning of February. Yeah. He plays uh, Michael Myers, uh, uh, the first actor to reprise his role as That's Michael right. Myers. Actually. From part four. Yeah. Did you get his autograph on your mask? No. He's one of the ones I you don't fuck. have. fuck. So. What the fuck happened? I have Tom Morga, so I got a little bit of four, part four yeah. representation on my mask. And I will get um, A. Michael Lerner 
at the uh, Halloween 45 uh, mm -hmm. convention in September. So he, played he was in a couple in scenes six. in this one. So I yeah. will have part six representation as well. But yeah, George P. Wilbur would have been cool. We never saw George P. Wilbur at nope. anything? Nope. Oh, that's too bad. It is. By the way, Halloween 45, uh, David's going, I might go. My wife keeps telling me she's just going to send me <laughs> off, uh, to go. But I'm like, oh, it's so, so, to fly across the country is not in yeah. inexpensive. I know my wife really wants you to go that, so that she won't have to, because I bought two tickets, and as of now, yeah, she's no, my, my plus one, but that could be you. I'm tentatively your plus one. <laughs> she's tentatively your plus one. At least you'll have someone to go with yeah. either way. You can either have fun or go with your wife. Um, no, I'm just and it's the weekend of my birthday. <laughs> oh, I'd be there. It'd be like my birthday. I'll just put a bow around my... <laughs> on that girl. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Halloween 45 is fixing to be good. If you are a fan of Halloween uh, and you're going to be in Southern California in Pasadena area, you should go to this and get yourself a Michael Myers mask because if you want to get them, every, everybody who's ever played, that's alive, everybody who's ever played Michael Myers is going to be I, there. Yeah, I think so. For the most part. Yeah. There's a ton of people so far. So you could get that mask signed, sealed, delivered. I... I keep thinking that's like the thing. I'm like, oh fuck, I should just, I should just go and do that. But that's also an expensive. Exactly. Yeah, that's thing. not cheap. Mm -mm. At least my mask, I've been able to chip away at it. Yeah. In fact, of the people that are going, I think there's only like two that I need. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it, David. Anyway, George P. Wilbur. There's other people um, that were in this movie. Nobody that has gone on to become anything more than just an actor that. Maybe you've seen in anything. <laughs> Somebody I, I, is listening right now. They're like, fuck you, Brett. I was in a <laughs> Cineburst commercial. <laughs> All right. Jesus Christ. I played Flavor Crystal number three. <laughs> uh, the runtime of this movie. Now, now we're talking. Okay. There's there's two cuts of this. There's the, the theatrical release, mm -hmm. which is what we watched. And then there's the producer's cut. So for anybody out there who's like, oh, which version are you going to talk about? We're talking about the one that everybody fucking saw. Okay. Well, actually, nobody, not a lot of people saw it. Uh, this movie's runtime was 87 minutes with a budget of $5 million. David, what do you think the box office was? Well, I would have guessed really low, but because we just talked about part five a month ago, I have retained a little bit of knowledge from that one. And you said that part five was the lowest grossing one. So this one did better. Which I would not have guessed. I would have guessed this one did worse. Um, so I'm going to go uh, 15 mil. You're absolutely correct. 15.1 million dollars. However, uh, you are correct. Part five was, I think, 11 million. Something like um, that. 15.1 million. And I think the reason why that is, is because time, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Yeah, and there was six It had years. been five years, six years since the last one came out. And so people were probably like itching. Like if a Friday the 13th movie comes out or when the new Friday the 13th movie ever comes out, dude, that's going to break box office records. Yeah, for... there'll be renewed interest. Oh, yeah. Got some facts for you, David. I actually did research other than just look at IMDb. Look at you. There was a couple of little tidbits that I did get from IMDb. But still, uh, you could have been in full senioritis mode. I could didn't. have been, but I'm not. Went the extra mile. But I'm not. Uh, Danielle Harris. So the character of Jamie Lloyd is in this movie. And we'll talk about the plot here in a second. But Danielle Harris had played that role in the two previous films. She was all set and wanted to. I heard about this. This is a bunch of bullshit. Reprise her role. But I guess Dimension Films, who had now taken over... They had bought the rights, Dimension, Miramax, yeah. the Weinstein dickheads. They had bought it, and they wanted an actress who was at least 18 years old to play it. So Danielle Harris was only 17. She got uh, herself, uh, for the suggestion of the filmmaker, she got herself legally emancipated. Yeah, so that she could work longer hours, right? Yep. <laughs> but then they said, no, we don't want you for this role anymore. And uh, they refused to pay her... Uh, the five thousand dollars that it costs to get herself legally emancipated, so it's nonsense. That's where that's where that <laughs> that's where that yeah, that's a bunch but of bullshit. Also, I think she probably read the script and was like, mm, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> that's the Weinstein's for you, though. 
Michael and Dr. Loomis are in no scenes together in this movie. That's the first I time in that. any Halloween film that <laughs> Dr. Loomis, well, up until this point, now they're not. In yeah, we get no together. Michael. <laughs> By the way, uh, I am gonna. We're gonna have a special guest later in this episode. I'm going to be having Doctor Loomis call in. Okay, <laughs> so just be prepared for that. By the way, I'm gonna need you to pretend to be Doctor Loomis <laughs> for that call. Okay, okay. Uh, um, this movie had the largest opening weekend out of the entire series until Halloween 2018. That's fucking insane. Even H2O. That's it nuts. beat out H2O for the opening weekend? That's crazy. Uh, that 15 million had to be all that it got. It had to be 15 million opening weekend. Yeah, and, and then it was the straight next. to the dollar theater. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking nuts, man. That is crazy. All right, so this is where my more in-depth research comes. So I want to give some credit to a couple of people. First of all, Dustin McNeil and Travis Mullins wrote a couple of books. One of them was called Taking Shape. And the other is called Taking Shape 2. I know, real creative on the second one's title. But <laughs> what that, what those series of books detail is the making of the Halloween movies. But it also, Taking Shape 2 specifically, goes into great detail about the unproduced Halloween scripts. For, from four, uh, well, actually from two, uh, there was an unproduced script that John Carpenter had thought of. Um to three, to four, to five, to uh, all all the way up through till present time. Yeah. So those two books, but um, the reason why I know about them, I don't have those books, but the reason why I know about them is Dustin McNeil was a guest on Best Movies Never Made. It's a Mm. podcast that I listened to, hosted by Steven Scarlatta and Josh Miller. Not that Josh Miller, another Josh Miller. The October 10th, 2022 episode and October 24th, 2022 episodes, The Unmade Halloween Parts 1 and 2, they talk to this guy, Dustin, um, at great length and he could talk this guy can talk <laughs> and it's really interesting so if you're interested in that all the unproduced halloween scripts listen to those yeah, two and you're episodes. looking for a new podcast to check out <laughs> <laughs> actually they're on hiatus right now oh but shit go back and listen to, i've listened to ep- episodes of that podcast multiple times yeah actually I'll they have, have that tons out. tons of horror stuff tons of john carpenter stuff hmm. there was an unmade uh the thing sequel that was going to be a made for TV that Ew. Frank Darab- Darabont was going to be involved. Oh, that's in. interesting. Yeah. It actually sounded kind of cool, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Made for TV. Mm. <laughs> Originally part six was supposed to come out in August of 1990, but the box office, uh, success or lack thereof of part five caused them to say, no, let's sit on this one for a bit. Let's sit on this one. And then in 1991, Freddie's dead came out and that kind of like, sealed the deal for slasher films from the 80s it was a bomb too yeah and it was like "Mm, i think we're moving past yeah it's a new decade it's a new decade let's let's get on with things um dimension miramax i talked about this earlier bought the rights to halloween and halloween 666 was the original title of an early draft and this early draft had virtual reality In it, and I guess Bob Weinstein. This this <laughs> that sounds ridiculous. Fuck. Put on the mask. Yeah. Ee, ooh, ooh, ee, ooh, ee. <laughs> it's like the Lawnmower Man. Yeah. Uh, but Bob Weinstein, I probably watched the Lawnmower Man and was like, "Oh, he got a fucking hard on." And he said to the writers, "He's like, you have to have virtual reality in this. <laughs> virtual reality has to be something. It's the in way it. of the future." And I guess from listening to the podcast, they were talking about it. And I guess in that draft, something about. Uh, time travel, like it take it took not not actual time travel. He's like Marty, <laughs> we gotta stop Michael from killing. <laughs> It'd be awesome. Loomis pulls up in a DeLorean, but they couldn't do a DeLorean, so it's like a like a Pontiac a Fiero Pinto. or something. <laughs> no, it's not. It's the fucking uh, station wagon. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it has gold wing doors. Yeah, he's like Lori, Jamie, <laughs> Lori, <laughs> he's back, Michael. Oh, Dr. Loomis, you're on the phone already. (laughs) It's our guest. (laughs) But anyway, he said that there has to be, Bob Weinstein was like, there has to be virtual reality into this. But I guess it was like, uh, you could go back, like you could see what had happened in that virtual reality world. I don't know. Shut the fuck up, Weinstein. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Sit your ass down. Give us your money and shut the fuck up. (laughs) 
Um, but because it was Miramax, Tarantino was coming off hot off of uh, Reservoir Dogs. Mm-hmm. Pulp Fiction was uh, was out at this point, or at least like going around the the um, festivals. Right, right. And uh, Miramax approached him to write and or direct Halloween Six, and he was like, eh, no. But he re- <laughs> he he passed them off to his friend Scott uh, Spiegel. Now Scott Spiegel, you, I don't know if you remember, but he's a co-writer of Evil Dead Two, friend of Sam Raimi ah, and okay. Bruce Campbell, and he also directed and wrote Intruder, a movie that I we remember that reviewed and it sucked. <laughs> but he looked at the script and he goes, "Look, I wrote The Intruder, and that movie fucking sucked. This." Is trash. <laughs> so when Scott Spiegel tells you that your script is trash, it's pretty bad. Listen. Yeah. Uh, but he was like, it needs to be completely re- rewritten. And Mustafa Akkad was like, well, I don't think we're going to do that. Just one last little bit before we get into the plot here. So uh, Halloween 6, we know, didn't wasn't that much of a success. It was right. more of a success than 5, but it, it, it was touted as like the worst Halloween movie for a long time. And I'm sure we'll get into our thoughts on that later. But Dimension, basically, after this movie came out, they were like, "We're this is going to be straight to video. You know how they did with like uh, Hellraiser movies? Mm-hmm. Where it's like every Hellraiser movie after part four, I think, which is straight to video, straight to right. video, straight to video. Leprechaun movies, Leprechaun in space, <laughs> straight to video. That's what they were going to do because people would rent that shit. You go to the video store and you're like, oh, a new Halloween movie? Okay, yeah, fuck I guess. <laughs> Can't be that bad, right? <laughs> And do you know those those Hellraiser movies weren't even Hellraiser movies? They were just scripts that they were sitting on, and they were like, and they just threw the Hellraiser name on it. Yeah, get some Add a couple bites scenes in with there. Pinhead. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and we'll call it that. But anyway, it was going to go straight to video. But Jamie Lee Curtis agreed to come back for part seven, and uh, then Kevin Williamson, who was fresh off of Scream and Scream Two at that mm-hmm. point, was like, "Oh, I'll come in too." He did some uncredited rewrites for H two O. It became H2O and not Halloween 7 and basically saved the franchise from, well, I don't know if it saved it, but saved it from going straight to video. Breathed some new life into it. Breathed some new life into it. People were excited about that H2O. I know. I was. I was one of them. I was too. Steve Miner directed that. And I didn't know at the time, but Steve Miner directed directed two of my favorite uh, Halloween or Friday 13th movies. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about plot. There really is none. No. Um, <laughs> all right. So this movie is uh, the third part in the trilogy. That is the Thorn trilogy. Yeah, which got teased uh, quite a few times in part five, but nothing ever came of it. No. Um, there's the tattoo that Michael has on his wrist that we see for the first time, I think, in part five. Yep. I don't. It's not mentioned at all in part four, no. right? They no, no. That fucking... You just see it in part five. There's a man in black that follows Michael around, or he's in Haddonfield doing something. We never see him. Oh, you know, man in black. He's wearing black boots. That's all we see, right? <laughs> and he breaks Michael out of uh, jail at the end. Yeah. It's six years after that, those events. And Jamie Lloyd was kidnapped that night, too. The night that Michael broke out of the jail and Loomis runs into the... I don't remember what happened with either, Loomis. I but I think he I did. Think Loomis and saw, like there. that he had busted out, and he was like, no... I don't think Loomis was there, actually, because I remember saying no. in our review, like, what happened to Loomis? He's just gone. Oh, yeah. He, like, died. That's right. Didn't he, like, have he a stroke? Die. He fell on top yes. of Michael. was like, oh, <laughs> Michael. Loomis. Hey, Dr. Loomis, you're on the phone. What happened to you in Halloween 5? I needed insulin. Okay. So he just had, he just, okay, you, I'm going to put you back on hold. Um, he just needed his shot. Oh, 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 Zampic. <laughs> The fucking commercial. Oh, God damn. <laughs> you know that, that song? That song that there's a... Uh, for a different drug? Song? No, that song for Ozempic. Oh, yeah, that yeah. Like, what is that um, riff? Oh, 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 oh it's magic. It's magic, yeah. you know. <laughs> Stupid <laughs> pharmaceutical commercials. They're Dude, catchy-ass the, jingles. But whatever band wrote that song is just going, ching Oh, give me that money. Ching. Fuck Yeah. Everybody's singing that Ozempic song. Do you sing the, uh, what's the, nothing is everything? What, what fucking drug is that? Oh, <laughs> no, but I know. I know what song you're talking about. It's like psoriasis or something. I can't even remember what that drug does. And you know what's 
fucked up is like I was telling you last night, like I don't watch a lot of regular TV. I usually watch streaming. Mm -hmm. Like I have a bunch of streaming subscriptions, but you still get the fucking commercials in that. And it's the same fucking three commercials. Like yep. over like, and God over. Damn. So the whatever so you walk it is, around just... your house singing jingles from different drugs, <laughs> yeah. talking about Camp Lejeune and shit. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I think I might have uh, mesothelioma. <laughs> we'll call this number for a free book. <laughs> All right. So that night, Michael got busted out by the man in black. All yep. those cops died in the prison cell. Prison. It was just a little fucking jail, <laughs> a holding cell. And uh, Jamie Lloyd, who was in the back seat of the cop car she got taken as well that's funny you're already ahead of me i didn't even know that yeah <laughs> i was just like how the fuck did jamie get here <laughs> yeah so that's they kind of they kind of hint on that but again i also listened to this fucking podcast where they talk yeah, about a about lot of this stuff. stuff so i might have some more inside Ooh. uh oh i might have some insider knowledge demon these people we're gonna, just gonna call them this cult yeah they're right? like in hoods and shit they're like druids yeah it's it's very like Halloween three ish, like it all is. This, like yeah, they should have they should have made them like uh, related to Halloween three somehow. Yeah, they totally should have. Like Connell Cochran should have been like their, you know, patriarch of yeah, this family. And Stonehenge uh, should have been involved in some way. Yeah, because it kind of is like right like this this Sawin, which they again talk uh, they pronounce Sam Hain in this <laughs> fucking movie right, but it's Sawin is like the old like druid which is that's like irish isn't it i think isn't so connell cochran's thing silver yeah. shamrocks so it's been six years and now jamie is uh pregnant oh she knocked up and she's she's squeezing out a kid she's like 15 years old right i mean the character the babies actress is babies. clearly 25 <laughs> like she's clearly not 15 right In, how, how old was this uh, chick? She, oh, that's Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, this this gal was clearly not 15 years old. Yeah, but she has a baby. She has a baby, which is, I mean, you can be 15 Whatever. and have hey. a child. But, you do you. Um, by the way, the father of the baby, it's insinuated. I mean, they later on they talk about like, oh, we've been doing DNA splicing and uh, in vitro fertilization, but uh, Michael's the father. So Michael is the father of this fucking of his nieces. That's baby. gross. Yeah, I don't like that angle at all. <laughs> well, I mean, it's the, I, it's not, I didn't. And what did this up. experiment entail? How did they get his uh, his his ejaculate? Yeah, the old fashioned way. I mean, yeah. Well, but but here's my thing about that. You're gonna tell Michael, like, hey, uh, go jerk off first. This, yeah, yeah, was Michael just milling about the facility that these people are at? <laughs> that, that's what it seems like because at the beginning <laughs> they're wheeling her around, right? And it's like it's very chaotic. This movie, like at the beginning, it's like got a lot of like MTV pans. And yes, like yeah, music very video stylistic type. cuts and pans yeah. and shit. It's like the real world. <laughs> fucking Haddonfield and she's like she gets into this thing and she's like giving birth and there's like a midwife nurse who's like oh breathe can you breathe and she's all mm -hmm. she gives birth to like an eight month old by the way that kid is big <laughs> yeah that was not a newborn <laughs> but dude going back to what I was saying I was very curious at first I was like what the fuck has Michael Myers been doing for the past six years like yeah does he work here like does he wear that mask like everywhere does he wash it yeah does I mean, he do laundry? He probably stinks like shit. Do they feed him? Yeah. They have to, right? I have no idea. And what do they feed him? They have to feed him because he's got to produce cum, dude. And you <laughs> need like a you need a substantial diet. And they give him uh, some pineapple so that it it's it tastes it's good. Tastes better. <laughs> Why does it need to taste good? Why does it need to taste good? And the man in black's got it drizzling down. <laughs> it's like, oh, this yogurt is like, sir, the taste is irrelevant. And he's like, says who? <laughs> Mind your own business, midwife. Why do we need more than one one uh, sample from Michael every day? Don't worry about it. Yeah, why do we have gallons and gallons of this shit? And where is it going? I couldn't help but notice there's some empty cartons. Oh, fuck. And that's Oikos. It was the Oikos. <laughs> oh, it's the Greek Oikos yogurt. factory. <laughs> <laughs> if you eat Greek yogurt made by Oikos, you're eating Michael Myers jizz. Yeah, and John Stamos is doing the commercial. <laughs> he was like, I was up for the role of 
uh, <laughs> fucking uh. Tommy Doyle. You know they wanted the kid uh, from the original. I heard about uh, that, and they couldn't find him. No, <laughs> they should have got fucking Sean Clark on that shit. <laughs> yeah, he would have found his ass. He would have found him. But now they know where he is, and they were like, "Yeah, but we don't need you for Halloween kills." <laughs> yeah, we'll get Anthony Michael Hall. Sorry. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, we haven't even got past the first five minutes. Okay, so <laughs> right, this <laughs> this midwife, she gives birth, and 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 Michael um, is like David said, is hanging around. They, uh, this facility also is like very industrial. Yeah, it's like underground. Yeah, it's like there's like pipes and shit. Yeah, it's like a music video. What's it? What's yeah, it? like What's a fucking... '90s grunge or like industrial <laughs> band video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're running around and this midwife comes up to Jamie and she's got the baby and she's like, look, I can get you out of here. Right. Yep. I mean, that that was better than what she actually said. I don't know what she said, but she's like, I can't remember Jamie, because like, while all this is going on, we also get Paul Rudd doing a voiceover and he's like, they say that evil is blah, blah, blah. He talks <laughs> like this, like throughout the throughout the entire movie. And, and I was watching this going this. OK, first of all, this is going to be people's sexiest man alive eventually. <laughs> number one. Number two. This is Paul Rudd. Like, I mean, he must have been, he must look back on this and go, what the fuck? <laughs> I will say that his acting throughout the movie evolves, though. He gets better. Like, the first few scenes, I was like, good lord. Do you know why? Because they, they, re, they reshot yeah, shit. Yeah, he got better. So the stuff he, that he's he learned good some at? shit on the, on the Clueless set. <laughs> yeah, Alicia Silverstone taught him how to act. School his ass. Dan Hedaya was like, look, this is how you act. <laughs> Dude, but like, do you remember in, um, was it Knocked Up? Where, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, Paul Rudd, he has that line where they're talking about Back to the Future. And he's like, mm-hmm. where we're going, we don't need roads. Like, that's how he delivers a lot of his lines. <laughs> yeah. In this movie, he's like awful. in that voice. He's awful. I, <laughs> even the stuff that he's better in, he's still awful. Like, <laughs> And he's the best actor in this movie. Donald Pleasance sucks in yeah. this movie. Donald Pleasance is just old. He's just he's like, tired. Gonna, he's done. He's like, I'm going to fucking die. I need to leave something to my wife and kids. <laughs> he just took this for a check. Mm-hmm. Same with part five. Same with part four. Same with part two. He just took this shit for a check. <laughs> so the midwife hands the baby. There's like, yeah, this voiceover and stuff. And uh, uh, Jamie runs with her baby. Now, you run with a baby like that, that baby's got a broken neck. <laughs> and they they carry this baby around like, clack, like clack, a rag clack, doll. Clack, clack, clack. Oh, yeah. Uh, but the baby's always happy <laughs> until it's not. And it cries for two seconds. And then it's satisfied again. And I'm like, this baby was born 24 hours ago. And nobody's fed this motherfucker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and fast forward to a scene later on where the baby's stashed like in a cabinet for like an evening. <laughs> and nobody and heard then, that baby at the bus just station. just barely cries. Yeah. Just barely cries. So Jamie's out running around with oh, her baby. Michael Myers, Michael- he kills that midwife. He smashes her head against uh This is like a, a post or a spike or something hanging out of the wall just- for no fucking reason. <laughs> like, who put that there? It's a coat rack. How did that get there? <laughs> Call OSHA. <laughs> I don't know if anybody belongs to a fucking union in this in, in this facility, but yes, you're right. OSHA he kills her, and it's kind of Bob esque from like part one. Like she's it's exactly just dangling Bob-esque. there, and he kind of does the head tilt. Yeah, he doesn't kind of do the head tilt. He, yeah, he does, does that it. fucking health. By the way, George Wilbur kind of paunchy. I thought so too. <laughs> I was like, do I detect a bit of a bit of a tummy? Yeah, until it's not George Wilbur. Yes, it's the other and then guy. it's like, oh, he slimmed down. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, so Jamie gets away, and she's running around, and she goes to this bus stop. She calls into a radio show. There's like this shock jock <laughs> character whose name is like Bobby. Uh, what's his name? I can't remember, but yeah, he's like a Howard Stern type. Oh, Bar- Barry Sims. Actually, they asked Howard Stern. I heard to do that this. they tried to get Howard Stern, and he read the script and was like, nah. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, because also this character of Barry, this shock jock, he's obnoxious. Oh, he's like, the worst. Even more so than Howard Stern. Yeah, he's awful. Be. Like, oh, awful. Oh, and Jamie, before she goes to the bus station, she steals a truck. Um, and the guy mm-hmm. that owns the truck, he's like outside doing whatever. I don't even understand. He's wearing a fucking rain drinking. poncho. He was like drunk. <laughs> he's like, hey, what are you <laughs> doing? <laughs> Michael Myers spins his head all the way around. That's pretty so, cool. I do like that we're only a couple minutes into this movie and we've already got two kills, which I think yeah. in the part five to get to two kills, we probably had to be about 45 minutes in. <laughs> at least. Yeah, so at least at they kind of get to it. I think it was 45 minutes in Something part like five that. For the second kill. It was definitely like 15 to get to Tina's death. 
Not yeah. Tina. Whatever the other one I can't remember. Was. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. But you're right. Jamie calls into a radio st- the radio station. Paul Rudd and calls Paul into Rudd's the radio listening. station, at, uh, I think, before her. And he's like, Michael Myers is alive. <laughs> He'll come back to Haddonfield. He always does. It's almost Halloween. He's out there. It's just like, oh, God, shut the fuck up. But then Jamie calls and she's like, oh, help me, help me. Oh, God. Dr. Lomas, if you're listening. And by the way, he is because everyone in this fucking town <laughs> listens to the radio all day, apparently. Listens to this local radio guy <laughs> who's like, I'm so cool. My name's Barry. Oh, God. Yeah, it's like it's like an Art Bell and Howard Stern yeah. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, like if Art Bell and Howard Stern had a child together, it'd be this fucking dickwad. dickwad. All right, so Jamie calls in. So Michael's also listening, and he's like, oh, I know where she is. <laughs> he follows her. She's at this bus stop now, and he follows her around this bus uh, station or whatever. And um, Michael, She's, like, hiding on a toilet. And I thought that would be funny. She's going, like, stall to stall. <laughs> yeah, if you hear, like, a fart or, like, a gloop, and it's like, oh, there she is. Michael finds her and he kills her. Are they in a barn now all of a sudden? Where yeah. the fuck? Are, how the fuck does she get to a barn, David? Well, she crashes. Like she gets in the truck and they have like a little car chase. Oh, and yeah, then she crashes right, right. the truck and gets out, runs into a she barn. Leaves the, she leaves the bus station. Yeah. He follows her in the truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Michael knows how to drive. Also, Jamie knows how to drive, despite the fact that she's been abducted for the past six years. And she's and a child. In a yeah. <laughs> It runs in the family that they just inherently know yeah, how to they drive just get vehicles. It. it just makes sense mm-hmm. to them. They're like yep. gearheads. Yeah, exactly. Yes, they crash in. There's this there's this uh, uh, barn, and Michael, again, slams her head up against something and turns like some bit of machinery on. He impales on. her like, through the stomach on yeah, some sort of machine, and then he turns it on and like grinds her guts She's or like, some shit. Jamie's dead. And then he goes, and this is about 20 minutes, 25 minutes into the movie. Actually, this this part of the movie go, f- clips by pretty yeah. quick. Because yeah. like David said, there's a murder, then there's another murder, there's this chase, there's this whole fucking setup. Tommy Doyle's looking at his neighbor through a fucking uh, <laughs> telescope, watching her get dressed. Yeah, um, nice bra. <laughs> I really like my neighbor's bra. I think it might be made of lace. <laughs> By the way, her bra and panties, I mean, she needs to get, she either needs to eat a sandwich to fill out a little bit more because she's fucking skinny as fuck, or she needs to get some more form-fitting stuff because that baggy. shit was baggy in the crotch area. Yeah. Wait, anyway, it clips along, 25 minutes in. Yeah. Michael goes to the car. He's going to get the baby. That's his mission. He goes and grabs it, and it's just a towel, and he's all, fuck, where's Curses. this baby at? Well, Tommy has recorded this show. He records this Art Bell show. On a reel-to-reel uh, <laughs> recorder. He's old school. <laughs> he's, like, playing it back. He's like, ah. Do you know how much like, it would cost to buy all those reels? Like, dude, get some Memorex fucking <laughs> shit. Yeah, man, it's 1995. Yeah. But, yes, he does. And he's listening back to it, and he's like, hmm. By the way, he's also like wearing khakis and a tucked in like black turtleneck while he's <laughs> <laughs> listening to this, looking at his wall of like uh, articles, paper clippings and shit. Yeah. Because uh, everybody has that in God, movies. Yeah, you got to have that. I want to be so passionate about something that I have newspaper articles yeah. just like of it. He even has clippings about himself, like about like <laughs> the boy that like Tell survived. It's like, dude, you know your own story. You put it out there for be, vanity purposes. It'd be great. It'd be great if he had all these newspaper clippings, and then the clipping about himself was like, "Local boy wins fifth place in art show," <laughs> <laughs> or like, like "Local man uh, sets world record for largest penis." But you can tell like the font is all off. Like he made that himself. But like when he's showing people like his stuff, he wants them to kind of casually glance at that one. Like, oh shit, that's him, right? What you know? What I'm gonna do, David? I'm gonna get. Um, like some pegboard or something, some like uh, poster board actually. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to get a bunch of newspaper articles about some like fucking unsolved murder. <laughs> and so, and then I'm going to hide it. So when I die, people are going to be like, he was the one Holy who fucking fuck, committed it this. Was him. But it's going to be a murder that I couldn't have possibly committed because it happened in like 1976. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but, do it. But I'm going to say that I it was me. <laughs> okay. We talked about across the street from Tommy. What were you going to say? I was going to say, I think this is also around the time that we meet uh, our main character, Kara. Yes. And her family. Next, who lives across the street. And her name is Kara Strode, by the way. And they live across the street in the old Myers house. Yep. Because Tommy lives in some fucking 
uh, it's like a boarding house or some shit. House. He's got like a landlady or something that lives there. Yeah, and he lives uh, he lives on the second floor, and he's always watching Kara and her family with his telescope. Yeah. With his big dick out. He's always watching the Myers house because he knows that's where Michael's going to go. He doesn't tell them. He just watches creepily. Yeah. And by the way, this house has never been sold. It just barely got sold. We just see... Because it's still got that Strode Realty yeah. sign on it, and it says sold. So it just barely got sold. And uh, the... The dad's name is John, and the mom's name is Deborah, and they're named after John Carpenter and Deborah Hill, who wrote Aww. the first Halloween movie. Oh, they're so cool. John Carpenter and Deborah Hill are probably like, don't name this shit after us, yeah, motherfuckers. Don't, don't do that. Don't at me, bro. <laughs> oh, no, don't. But anyway, so uh, they're the Strodes, and John Strode, who's the dad, his brother is Lori's adopted dad from the first movie. Okay. Thank you, because I was like, who the fuck are these people? I know they're Strodes, but that's it. Yeah, and he works for Strode Realty now. Barely. And he was, yeah, <laughs> um, he drinks while he's at Strode Realty. But he uh, has bought the Myers house because he's like, we can get it for cheap, and uh, we just need to sell it so it doesn't look bad. Yeah, and the only problem is just every few years or so, uh, Michael Myers comes back and murders people <laughs> in the house, but... But this house has been for sale for 20 years at this point. And it's like, fucker, wait, why don't they just like, I mean, nobody has bought this house in 20 years? That's weird. Let's talk about this family, okay? So there's uh, the mom, Deborah. She's like this mousy, very meek. Very meek. By the way, you got this movie fresh in your head, right? Mm -hmm. you, got, you got what the mom looks like? Yeah, I can picture her. All right. How old do you think she is? Oh, at the time they made this movie? I'll put her in like, the movie. If you had to guess, like, what would you say her age was? Like, not even like, don't be logical about it. Just like, look at her. Late fifties. Oh, the actress who plays this role, by the way, was um, when the movie was released, was forty eight years old. Wow. They either made her look older, <laughs> or she looks old, <laughs> or people just look fucking old back in yep. the day. David. Yeah, she looked older than that. Yeah. So um, anyway, so she uh, is a, a mousy woman. They have uh, Kara who is their daughter, and uh, Kara has a younger brother named Tim, who is like, is he in high school? Is he in college? I didn't really get... It was kind of ambiguous. I thought college just because of the way they looked. Because I thought the brother was in high school, but then they were all on this college campus together. Yeah, I thought college, but that's just because okay. they all looked like college people and not high school, but that doesn't mean anything in movies. That's true. Okay, so anyway, her younger brother and her both go to college, and she has a six-year-old son. Yes. Danny. And Danny has visions of this man in black, and he'll, like, draw coloring crayons. Uh, like yeah, and pictures. he draws the thorn. He hears voices. This kid's fucked up. Yeah. So, okay. Let's talk about the dad first, and then and then we'll talk about this yeah. little fucking kid. <laughs> the dad, by the way, the biggest dick head ever. Total over the top douche. He, I mean, the moment he comes on the screen, I'm like, God, I cannot wait till he fucking gets yeah, killed. yeah. He's just hostile for no reason. He's hostile. He's um super aggressive. Yeah. Um, he's a shitty he's worker. Like, we'll find out he just gets drunk at work. <laughs> Yeah, and I guess in the now you saw the producer's cut eventually or before, right? I've seen it before, yeah. Okay, I guess in the producer's cut, like there's little inklings that he is sexually abusive towards Kara, and he is actually the father of Danny. Oh, gross! Yeah, I don't like and that. And that's why she left, and then she's back because she needs help, like with her life and raising her kid and stuff like that. Okay, yeah, because they never really explain why she left. Just that no. she's been gone a long time and now she's back. He smacks her across the face, like right in front of her kid and calls the kid a bastard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like in the and, very first scene that we meet him, it's like, okay. And he's like, he's like, oh, going to college, huh? What's a degree going to help you with? It's like, mother, fuck you. Yeah, exactly. Like you got a desk job at a real estate agent's office. That fuck your off. brother owns. Yeah. It's a family business. You yeah. fucking dick. Wait, he's such a dickhead. Anyway. Then you got Danny, this little fucking kid. This kid is annoying as shit. <laughs> this kid, I I hate this kid. No offense towards the actor who played him, but I hate this fucking kid. I hate this character. I hate everything about it. Why does he have visions of the man in black? Like, is it the house that's giving it to him? Because he's not a fucking Myers. I don't get it. I don't get it either. Unless it's the, okay, 
Let's jump way ahead. Mrs. Blankenship, who lives across the street, runs the boarding house. Is it her? Because she's one of these fucking druid clan people? I don't know. I couldn't really make sense of it. (laughs) <laughs> but he's got the that's, evil like the evil gene is is present apparently that's the biggest problem with this movie just to kind of jump ahead way ahead mm-hmm. is that there's no fucking cohesive story and it's not i don't want to blame the writer of this script because it's probably through editing it's through a bunch of other shit but the writers to the previous scripts and the movies that came out kind of painted them in a corner that they felt like they needed to get their way out of when in actuality they could have just fucking disavowed yeah just scrapped all that shit and just michael myers is out again and he's killing people but then we'd be talking we'd be like what happened to the man in black why didn't they ever i heard they what about that thorn tattoo (laughs) i heard they had an unmade script anyway that's the that's the characters kara is the main character though yeah kind of kind of she's really like a weak-ass main character yeah because i guess you can make the argument tommy's the main character yeah. You know who's not the main character? Dr. Loomis. He's barely even in this movie. Dr. Loomis hears his name on the radio. He's like, oh. Oh, yeah. Hold on. They say something Hold like, on. Dr. He... Loomis. Dr. Loomis. Do you remember when your name came on the radio? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they thought I was dead. And I looked at the camera. And I said, I'm just very much retired. All right. Thanks, Which he Dr. did. Loomis. I thought that was fucking weird. Like, he, like, looked at the camera. <laughs> you give him a little wink. I'm just retired. Yeah. Week. <laughs> so Tommy figures out through listening to this radio. Oh, remember when I said he had his like um his fucking turtleneck and his khakis? <laughs> well, he's listening back to that reel the reel and he hears uh um Jamie and he's like, hmm, there's something in the background, right? He's all fucking detective now, right? This reminded me so of he... the fugitive. Do you remember that movie? Like where they like figure out that's an elevated train? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly, exactly. And and he's like rewinding and playing it back and he's like listening to it and he's like, oh, it says something about a bus station in the background. Because when Jamie called, she was on a payphone at the bus station. It's like, now boarding bus number five from Pontiac, Michigan. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I know where that bus station is. <laughs> That's the, yeah, it's the, the bus There's station. Only one. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the bus station. <laughs> so Tommy goes to the bus station and he's like, do the voice, David, what he asks. He asks did, the guy. I can't remember the name, the number of the train, but it's like, did the 126 from Pontiac arrive last night? I'm like, <laughs> yes. Can I help you? Walk away. <laughs> That's exactly I had cut. All right, move it on. <laughs> cut it. Cut, print it, roll. Next scene. Go get in that you phone did great. Booth, Paul. You did great, Paul. <laughs> get an Oscar up. Yeah, you find a trail of, of blood, react. <laughs> yeah so <laughs> he finds this trail of blood uh yeah, which no one else the at the, worked at the station saw there's know, fucking blood right? everywhere there's no fucking janitor yeah come on <laughs> there's always janitors at those places with mops and buckets i've seen movies they're always walking around um but anyway he goes to the uh, phone booth where he suspects jamie called from and he sees blood and so he follows the blood trail into the women's bathroom pervert Right? How did he know it wasn't just some woman who was like, oh shit, I just started my (laughs) menstrual cycle. (laughs) But there's a lot of blood from menstruation. That's true. It's a heavy, heavy flow. Heavy flow. (laughs) Heavy flow month. (laughs) Um, He goes in there and he sees the blood leading him to uh, the bathroom, obviously. And he goes inside there and all of a sudden a baby starts crying. For the first time (laughs) in 24 hours or so. (laughs) Since it was born. Yeah. Yeah. He opens it up and there's this fucking one year old just <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> yep. And he's uh, like, oh shit, baby. All right. And so he takes it and now he starts running around with the fucking baby. Like, first of all, that baby grows and shrinks in size mm-hmm. depending on the shot that they're in. And Paul Rudd, by the way, his running, he doesn't run Rudd that well. He's kind of like pigeon toed and he's kind of like hunched over all the time. <laughs> and yeah, he's his like, he runs is like kind of strange. Foot. Like, you know that scene of Bigfoot, like the Patterson Gimlin footage? Oh, yeah, yeah. Where it's it's kind of lumbers. It's kind of like Paul, yeah, kind of like lumbers along, but for like a meek little like, oh, I'm Paul Rudd, I'm nerdy. I'm so, I'm so cool because I can improvise. So yeah, anyway, so that's, he's running around with this baby. <laughs> he takes okay. that baby to a hospital and then I like, he goes up to the person at the front desk and he's like, I need a doctor to see my baby. And she's like, 
oh, is everything okay? Or everybody's like, give me a doctor. <laughs> yeah, he's like, like, oh that's, shit. That's the emotion that he should Security. Uh, Dr. Loomis is there at the hospital visiting yeah. an old friend of his, uh, fucking Dr. Wynn. Dr. Wynn. Terrence Wynn. And uh, they're like, what the fuck's going on? They think something's wrong with Jamie. Yeah, because Tommy Tom- tells him who he is. He's like, Dr. Loomis. And he's like, I'm sorry. I don't recognize you. And why would he? No. And he's like, I'm Tommy Doyle. He's like, oh, yeah. Oh, the, the kid the that boy. ran past me in 1978? <laughs> like, yeah. they never shared any screen time? No. But, I mean, I would imagine he knows who he is. Like, now. Like, here's the name. But I thought this was weird. So, the security people start to show up. And Paul Rudd's like, oh, fuck. And he's like, I got to get out of here. Hey, Loomis, why don't you meet me, like, at the campus rally at 9 o'clock tonight so we can talk? And I was like, first of all, why did why so late? Like, it's a long time in the future. <laughs> also, why didn't Loomis be like, hey, security, be cool. I know this guy. He's cool. Uh, yeah, exactly. And then just talk. Yeah. But no, he takes off running with the baby and breaks that baby's neck. Uh, oh, and the other question that I have, David, is uh, why why did he take the baby, too? He's like, I'm going to take this baby. <laughs> why not just leave the baby there? Like, oh, shit, a free baby. <laughs> <laughs> that was so stupid well, no, um, I think it's because he knew it was Jamie Lloyd on the phone So I'm guessing he assumed it was Jamie Lloyd's baby Did Jamie yeah. Lloyd say something about well, a baby on the call to the DJ? In the, in the I don't know in this cut I think in the producer's cut mm-hmm. She does say he's after me and my baby Oh okay, that makes more so sense So that kind of explains everything But he takes the baby back to his boarding house And he starts cleaning the baby up, right? Yeah. This is my least favorite favorite scene. <laughs> this is my favorite least favorite scene. This is my favorite scene in the movie, I think. Because he's like, I rewound it a couple times. <laughs> because he's like, hey, baby. He's like, cleaning the baby. The baby's just like looking at him. Baby's cool, right? And he's like, I'm going to name you Steven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Do you I like that, that name? too. Like, that's not I your... was like, Steven. That's not your decision, dude. So that reminded me of something. That this is why I rewound it. This is why I'm I I laugh at this, and I don't know if you'll think it's funny, but I think it's fucking funny, so I'm gonna share it with you. Hmm. Did you ever watch that show? Tom goes to the mayor. No, it's uh, Tim and Eric. They're like oh, okay. a comedy duo. Yeah, they had that show. Tim and Eric, awesome show, good job or whatever. Yeah, um, but they also did the show called Tom Goes to the Mayor, and uh, like um, Bob Odenkirk would come out on there all the time, mm-hmm. and um, uh, Michael Ian Black. Was in an oh, episode. Okay. Yeah, that guy's funny. And the episode that he's in uh, is one of my favorite episodes. And there's this clip where they say something about the Steven. So I'm going to play this for you. Okay. <laughs> and uh, this is a thing that I do all the time. My wife fucking hates this, by the way. <laughs> so, of course, I do it more times than I should. Yay. Because she does fucking hate it. All right. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Mayor? Michael? rick a tick tock tick tock tock Ring, ring a ding ding, ring a ding ding, rick a dick, rick, rick a dick, rick, ring a ding a ding ding dong, rim, 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 rim. Who's this guy? Oh, shoot, that's torn, tash, tennis, tens, tango, cash, tay. He looks like a Steven to me. <laughs> Steven. <laughs> Steven. <laughs> Hello, Steven. Hello, Steven. So, Michael. They tell me you're a doctor of energy now? Yeah, it's a great gig, and you are not going to believe the company car they just gave me. Not a LeBaron. A LeBaron. rick a tick a tick tock tick tock tock Ring, ring-a-ding-ding, ring-a-ding-ding. Ring-a-ding-ding, ring-a-ding-ding, ring. Rick-a-dick, rick, rick-a-dick, rick. Ring-a-ding-a-ding-ding-dong. So that is Tom Goes. <laughs> Your wife doesn't like that? Do you do the whole thing? I just do the rick a dick okay. ding rick a dick ding ring a ding ding dong. Sometimes, and then if I ever hear anybody's name is Steven, I go, hello, Steven. <laughs> um, so that whole scene, by the way, uh, there's the mayor and there's Tom, mm. right? And Tom is always going to the mayor and that's kind of the, ah, okay. Michael Ian Black comes in and that's who he said, what's his name? And he's like, oh, Tay, Tosh, Torn, T, Cash. Um, but it's not Steven. That's what's funny. About it. Anyway. <laughs> Tom goes to the mayor. I highly recommend it. It is fucking hilarious, and that particular episode is great. Awesome. Rick a dick a dick. That's not the name of the episode, but if you type Tom goes to the mayor, Rick a dick, you'll find it. <laughs> you'll find it. Um, okay. 
So Steven, baby Steven, who names the kid Steven? Like, okay, Steven's not a bad name. I don't want to knock the name Steven, but like for a baby, you're just going to, a baby you pick up, you're going to, I'm going to name you, you Steven. You look like a Steven. <laughs> Nobody looks like a Steven except for Stevens. Like old people look like Stevens. <laughs> like, wouldn't you call him like Billy? Hey, I'm going to name you Billy. Yeah, yeah, like a little kitty kind of name. Billy Mikey. Loomis. Oh my God. Billy Loomis. Where, do, what does he, where does he leave the baby? I don't. Re- I found this confusing too. Uh, I don't know. This is the answer to the question. I don't know where this baby is, but the baby's going to well, disappear he, eventually. But it disappears and then it comes back and yeah. then it disappears again. Yeah, I don't know. That baby's magic. But the next scene is um, Deborah Strode. She's at home. Oh yeah. And she oh, gets yeah. a we phone talk call. About the deaths. And the yeah. call's like, "We want the child." And she's like, "Yeah." Who is this? <laughs> <laughs> she's like oh god and she like hangs up and she's like walking through the house like all paranoid like ah, 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 ah. and all of a sudden fucking loomis is in the house yeah she's like, she's like how'd you get in here and he's like i'm dr loomis ring a doorbell homie knock yeah, michael <laughs> michael's coming back here he's gonna kill you and she she gets worried and she calls her husband who's at work and he's like strong reality she goes, John, you never told us that this is the Michael Myers house. And I'm like, are you fucking dumb? Woman? <laughs> but anyway, and, and all the stuff that happened here. And I just, Dr. Loomis came and I'm leaving and I'm taking the kids and I wish you'd go with me. And he's all, fuck you. Yeah, I'm getting drunk at work. <laughs> fuck off. Oh, and this is where she gets the phone call after Shane's up with him. That's when she gets the call and they're like, we yeah. want the child. Yeah. She, well, and she doesn't have the fucking child. Yeah. She should have been like, what baby? What? Yeah. Maybe she Child, thought they were talking they about mean, the the one kid. Do they mean Danny? Danny, yeah, the six year old, maybe with the big earlobes. I don't know. <laughs> He's got big ears, and so does the brother Tim. He's got big earlobes, thick, meaty earlobes. Like I'm like you. If you wanted your ear pierced, like it would take like a hole punch it's to get. Yeah, there. heavy, heavy gauge to get through there. <laughs> this will hurt, anyway. young man. So she's like uh, walking around the house. Oh, and Michael just appears, and she's like. <gasps> And she, she can barely runs. move. She's like, ah, ah. And then she does that thing that I love in movies where she drops her glasses and the glasses break. And then she's like, oh. She turns into a fucking mole that can't see. She's like, oh, I'm blind without my glasses. And her glasses weren't even that thick. No. Like, I feel like my prescription's worse. No. Ridiculous. <laughs> well, and, and you know what? If I was getting chased by a fucking killer, I'd be like, well, guess what? I'm going to just run. Yep. I'm just going to go on pure instinct here. And I'm just going to be throwing my fists as I run. And if you run into my fists, it's your own fault. It's not assault. Who's that her, lady running down the street? She's not going to have to worry about her vision problems for long, though. No, Michael gets her. She's out by the laundry, by the way. She yeah, yeah. Like the, the clothesline. Laundry. Yeah, she had to hang up the clothesline, I guess, because the dryer didn't work, the washer didn't work. Yeah, it was like know. leaking or something. That was the washing machine, though. That wasn't the dryer. Yeah, I don't She's know. an idiot. She's like, oh, <laughs> the washer doesn't work. I better go hang these clothes. That's not how you wash them, Deborah. <laughs> Fucking Michael, kill her. Yep, with pleasure. Kill he takes him. an axe and... Oh, dead. yeah, he takes that fucking axe. Yeah, he axes are real good. They set up that axe by having a yep. dickhead strode... He chopped down the for sale sign. I'm Seems like, dude, that's a- <laughs> you can just pull that shit out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it wasn't one of those big Century 21s. No, like, it was yeah, just it was a, a little stick. one. <laughs> Lift with your <laughs> knees, not with your back. <laughs> pull that shit out, man. <laughs> your legs, not your knees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could tear up well, your you knees. bend your knees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, Kara comes home, and she's looking for her mom. She's like, Mom? Mom? Mm-hmm. Mom, and she says mom and nobody, probably 10 times. And and Danny is at home with Tommy Doyle because Tommy Doyle's befriended Danny. So you got Danny, Tommy, and the baby, Steven, baby Steven. Baby Steven. They're all, <laughs> they're all, uh, I think there was a movie or I think there was a book called Hello, My Name is Steven about a kid who like got. That sounds like, familiar. Yes, yes, abused yes. Abused or some shit. Or kidnapped, I think. Yeah, kidnapped. Yeah. So I know my name is Steven. Something yeah, like that. That's yeah. what it is. I know my name is Steven. I forgot about that, but yes, it's, that it's totally based rings on bell. this movie. Yep. <laughs> Although I think that's a true story. <laughs> uh, that we shouldn't be joking about, David. It's not funny. Kidnapping. But dude, you're right. Tommy's got Danny at his house. And baby cause... Steven. And they're all upstairs playing a Game Boy and fucking um the mom's been calling out names and nobody answers. Yeah. Nobody's like, hey, we're home. Yeah, nope, mom, she's we're calling over here. for mom. <laughs> No, nope. it's Game Boy time. <laughs> and she didn't call our names. We're not going to respond, right? Nope. Someone doesn't say my name. I'm not talking. My name's not mom. So, 
<laughs> so they go upstairs and and Tommy's like, look, I'm Tommy Doyle. I've been watching you. Yeah, she's, and she's like, like I, know, I know, pervert. What are you doing to my kid? <laughs> but I still don't close the blinds. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then he's like, he's like, well, I survived Michael Myers 20 years ago, and this is what's going to happen. And she's like, oh, all right, well, I guess we're going to follow you now. And they just go over to Tommy Doyle's house. Dude, and Tommy Doyle's room is a fucking fire hazard. Holy <laughs> shit. Like, that guy's got candles <laughs> burning everywhere. I know. Why? Like, you would think he was in the fucking druid cult. He's got electricity. He's got that reel-to-reel running. What's he need all the candles for? <laughs> but they believe him, like, instantaneously. Yeah, and he tells them about the, the rune shit and the thorn and the curse and all that stuff. Yeah, and they're like, yeah, okay, that seems legit. Oh, a curse that uh, causes the person with the mark to kill their entire family on Halloween? Okay, yeah, checks out. Yeah. The dad comes home. Oh, he's drunk. And he's wasted. And it's nighttime now, and he's like, oh, Deborah. I home? guess she really did leave. <laughs> yeah, it's like, motherfucker, she said she was leaving. <laughs> he's like, thanks for putting dinner out for me. Bitch. The power goes out, so he goes downstairs. But the power goes out, but the washing machine still works? Yeah, it was just the lights. Maybe he just like flipped one breaker on the panel. Maybe, or it runs off a different circuit breaker or something. I don't know. Michael Michael's an electrician now, too. Apparently. But, uh, so the dad shuts the washing machine off. I thought it would be great if the mom was in the washing machine. That would have been cool, like tumbling around. Yeah, like yeah. that's what he heard. But no, it was just their blood-soaked clothes. And he's looking at it. He's like, huh? Mm-hmm. Did she start her period? Um <laughs> And then from behind him is Michael, and Michael, uh, he, he like stabs him stabs with something. Stabs him first. And then lifts him high in the air, and then he like pins him against the circuit breaker. And homeboy gets electrocuted <laughs> so much that his head blows up. Dude, I loved that. When his head exploded, <laughs> I did a slow clap. And it like explodes. <laughs> it's like scanner style. Yes, exactly. It was exactly like scanners. And... Um, and Michael's unharmed, of course, even though he's touching him the entire time. But Maybe he was wearing rubber gloves and he was grounded properly. Uh, that could be. <laughs> Safety first. So now, so now we're at this little fucking, what was it that? Oh, like uh, the rally told, at the school? Yeah. Yeah. So this is where Paul Howard Rudd Stern? is supposed to meet. Yeah. Supposed to meet Loomis. Howard Stern's going to be there. <laughs> and the brother, Tim, and his girlfriend are the ones organizing this. They're the one that got this Barry, this DJ to come. Yeah. The DJ is really perverted to the girlfriend. He's like, oh, I bet you uh, wear crotchless panties and yeah, bark like gross. a dog. It's like, what the fuck does that even mean? First of all, like, wh- what does that even mean? I bet you wear crotchless panties and bark like a dog. Yeah. Huh? What? What does one have to do with the other? And even what kind if, of fantasies do you have, buddy? Even if she does. Okay, cool. None of your fucking business. Yeah, to each dickweed. their own. He finds out that Tim Strode is living in the old Myers house. He's, He's like, like, what? Let's- I'll meet you guys over there in five minutes. We can broadcast from there. So he goes into his um, van and he's like, uh, he's on the cell phone, which is early cell phone technology too. But anyway, he's on the, he's on a cell phone and he's like, yeah, we're going to be broadcasting from there. Fuckers. We should have been broadcasting from there. See you later. Click. And then Michael comes from behind in the van and fucking kills him. <laughs> fucking snaps his neck. And I'm like, where the fuck did Michael come from? And why is he after this DJ? Yes. Yeah. I thought that too. And, <laughs> Uh, they find him like a scene or two later hanging in a tree. Like, so he also put him in a tree. Uh, yeah, How the fuck with, did he get like, him up there? With Christmas lights all over the place. Did he and he's all carry him up there. Yeah. Did he throw Unbeknownst him? Unbeknownst to anybody else. Yeah. I, I, okay. All right. Yeah. And that scene that you're talking about, there's this little girl dressed in, as like a fairy and she's like, cause it's Halloween. Right. And she's like, Oh, it's raining. It's raining red. Mommy, it's raining red. And Paul Rudd sees this and he's all, huh? And he looks up and there's, there's something not right about that rain. I better stand in it. This is blood. <laughs> it's coming from above me. Oh, it is the DJ. <laughs> it's that guy who's a lot like Howard Stern, but not really. <laughs> He's like Art Bell and Howard Stern if they had a baby. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So he's like, okay, whatever. And then Tim and his girlfriend go back to the house and the power's out. To bang. Yeah. The power's out and they're going to meet up with this DJ. And the 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 girl's like, well, maybe I do wear crotchless panties and bark like a dog. Oh, Let's go shit. fuck. <laughs> yep. So they go, they go fuck. He gets about two thrusts in. He's like, I, I need to take a shower. <laughs> he's done. And he goes to take a shower because he he's got to be clean. 
and uh, he asked for a, her to hand him a towel, which I found really odd. Like she was clearly like in the She's bed. In the bed. Like, yeah. Can't weird. you just go grab your own towel? Like anytime I take a shower, I'm not like, honey, can you grab me? Can a you towel? drop whatever you're doing and bring me a towel? <laughs> <laughs> that's three feet away from me hanging on a towel rack i'm afraid i might slip on the floor and hurt myself michael hands him the towel and checks out his dick while he says he's like, oh. <laughs> he's like my hmm. man's packing this guy's got the world record he's like no 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 that was tommy doyle I'm like oh, okay tommy doyle's like no 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 that's that me. me that's me he's like no that fonts in comic sans come on kill him not fooling him. anybody I don't know who dies first. Tim but they does because uh, Michael Tim he's in the bathroom and like comes up behind him and slits his throat. Slits his throat. Yeah. Yep. And then the girlfriend dies. Yeah, because Kara calls the the house because she knows what's going on now, and she Kara or Beth answers the phone, mm-hmm. and she's like, "What? What's going on? Oh, Kara, you're crazy!" Because <laughs> she gets stabbed like while she's on the phone with her. Yeah. So she's dead. Tommy leaves to go meet up with Loomis. Michael kills the, everybody else. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Blankenship tells Kara that she was babysitting Michael the night that he killed his sister. Yeah. He and was, that the voice. Uh, she wasn't. Uh, she wasn't, by the way. But, and that Danny Judith is was, hearing, right? Yes. That was the whole kind yeah. of point, right? But the voices that Danny's hearing are the same voices that Michael heard. Uh, oh which said that the curse is being passed on to Danny. Oh. And it will be passed on to Danny if little baby Steven is killed because baby Steven is it's, supposed to be the next. Yeah, and that's how curses work. They jump. <laughs> the quantum leap. To people who aren't related to them. Yep. So Tommy and Lou, uh, Loomis, they come back to the boarding house after finding the dead DJ. And um, well, this is where they discover the baby's gone. Tommy's like, oh shit, I left the baby to cool on the windowsill and it's gone. <laughs> And, uh, uh, well, and Michael was there and he's like chasing them around, but then the baby is in the arms of, um, the man in black. Yeah. And he's like, Oh shit. Show yourself. And we, and we find out the man in black is that doctor friend of Loomis's. Dr. Win, you fucker. Yeah. He wins. Win <laughs> wins. And he's like, basically tells everybody what's been going on. He's part of this cult that uh, has been doing this since the beginning of time and they're studying the power of Thorn through DNA experimentation and that Loomis was the first to notice the evil inside of Michael years ago and they want to pass that evil along. I don't know what the purpose of it Dude, was, though. I thought that too. What was the purpose? And also, I wanted Loomis to be like, okay, that's all well and good, but why am I here? What do I have to do? You came to me, homie, and asked me to come out of retirement. like, And now you're just going to yeah. like presumably yeah, kill me? Yeah, you knew all of this stuff. Yeah, what the fuck, dude? I thought we were friends. Yeah, but I guess maybe he needed Loomis to lead him to where <laughs> where uh, the baby was or some shit. Dude, and I love this part. This part cracked me up. The cult or whatever, they start to like grab everybody or like, you know, and Kara is just like, fuck this shit and just swan dives <laughs> out the window. <laughs> I know I said the same thing. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> she just goes, fuck this shit. Wee! She- she lands on the ground and then it cuts and Loomis and Paul Rudd are at that spot where she landed on the ground and they're like, where's Kara? Everybody left. It's like they didn't fucking take Loomis and Paul Rudd. They just fucking took Kara Dude, and the baby. And it was such a Danny. clunky cut too because like Paul Rudd's like, I feel like I've been drugged. And Loomis like, it's because we were drugged. There couldn't have been it's a scene clunky. of them waking up and being like, oh God, what's going on? Go Kara and just walk outside. That would have taken five seconds. Uh, this movie is edited <laughs> shittily. It's awful. <laughs> Very awful. Um, they determine that uh, Wynn has taken him back to the sanitarium All that three he works of them. at. And so he's, they they go to, Loomis and, and Tommy Doyle go back to the sanitarium and they're going to rescue everybody. This is where, this is where um, Donald Pleasance died in real life because <laughs> we never see him okay. except for one more scene after this because. Because they shot that other scene first. This is where they reshot that it, this ending, yeah. right? So he goes, I'll be right back. And he goes to find Wynn and he goes and approaches Wind in his Wynn in his office. And there's like this footage that they used for something else that they just reused. Yeah. And then the guy who played Wynn like had to shoot a whole new scene without Donald Pleasant. So he's used there. a body double. Yeah. That makes sense and because they, this scene is really weird. They have like a conversation that doesn't really go anywhere. And then a, a random thug just comes over and knocks Loomis out. Loomis out. Yep. And that was all shot after. Donald yeah, Pleasant's that makes died. sense. And like I said, they just reused old footage and just 
kind of like tried to make it work. But yeah. you're right. Because the conversation is like, what? why are they having this conversation? Yeah, like, it doesn't they, make any sense. Why is this happening? Meanwhile, Tommy now... Um, so this is a reshoot of the ending because the producer's cut ending is different. And I'll talk about that in a second because we're almost we're almost there. The finish line is ahead of us, folks. <laughs> so they go. Uh, he goes to rescue Kara. Who did you notice and, she was locked in room two, three, seven? Oh, very oh, shining. Shining reference. So he gets her out of this thing. He also meets some other mental person. Who I don't understand why this person was even in the movie. They're <laughs> yeah, like, how does it no feel? Sense. Yeah. How does it feel to be locked up or something? It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. But when he busts her out, he uses a fire hydrant, breaks the door handle. Michael Myers is coming very, very slowly towards them, but they Slow. get away just in the nick of time. This is when Wilbur's like got that pot belly yeah, going he's got on the little here. Little... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And but he busts Tommy out does something very time. strange too here. After he breaks her out, like he looks behind and looks like there's like a security desk or something. He grabs a gun, shoots Michael Myers point blank range in the chest, and then we never see that gun again. We don't even see a shot of him <laughs> dropping the gun. The gun just turns invisible. Yeah. But like, why not hang on to the gun? There was a whole like rack of guns too, I think. Like, take a couple weapons. But no. no. Not Tommy Doyle. No, he uses he his fists. He lets his fists do the talking. <laughs> yeah. This is this is thunder and this is lightning. Yeah. <laughs> Together. <laughs> I'm gonna make a storm. All over your face. <laughs> uh so he frees and Michael's after them. They're running around and uh they see through one of those observation windows like they have in all hospitals, apparently. Yep. Um, in movies at least, they're watching as uh, Dr. Wynn and his crew of merry men are. <laughs> and one of them is dressed like in one of these druid costumes, and it looked like the witch's costume in <laughs> Halloween 3. Yeah, it did kind of. And I think even Wynn makes a comment like, dude, take the fucking costume off. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, he's like, okay. But anyway. <laughs> but uh, I like this costume. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a costume. Um, they're all going to do some medical procedure on Danny and Steven. I don't know what they're going to do to them. I don't know either, but they're going to do something. Well, Kara and uh, uh, Tommy Doyle, they're hiding, right? Yeah. And Michael just walks by them and then he grabs like the world's <laughs> biggest fucking scalpel. But it's yeah, like, a it like a machete. It's like, what the hell is that doing in a hospital? <laughs> but it's like on like a, a one of those trays like they would like. Yeah, because he like first picks up a scalpel and he's kind of like, eh, no, I'll get this big ass machete instead. Yep. So then he goes into the operating room. Oh, by the way, the kids aren't in there. The kids aren't in the operating room. They're somewhere else. But all, all the doctors and stuff are in yeah. there. And Michael goes in there and he just starts laying everybody away. He goes ape shit and just starts hacking everybody up. And we never see Wynn again either. We don't even see Wynn die, do we? Oh, that's a good point. No, I don't <laughs> think we do. No. God, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> <laughs> he just starts laying everybody to waste. And then uh, Tommy and Kara grab the kids and they start running. And again, this is where Michael, babies. This is where Michael Myers loses weight. Yeah, this is where Michael loses weight. And he starts, well, he's been chasing after everybody. He's burning <laughs> off working those on his cardio. So they, they run and they're like, there's this like druid guy who's running behind him. He's like, help, help, save me, save me. And they just lock his ass in in with Michael and Michael uses his head to bash down this fucking dude. And I don't know if this is true, bars. Um, but I read somewhere that that actor that was like running down the hall was actually uh, a Michael Lerner, the guy who's now Michael Myers. It was his dad. Yeah. That's, that's what I read. That's true. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know no, if it's we true. Both read I the same I can IMDb confirm, fact or something. <laughs> I can confirm that that was something I just read. <sighs> they get away somehow. Yeah. Um, Tommy confronts Michael Myers and he's like, and he has a bundle you of one. Like you a, won, Michael. What? You won, Michael. Yeah. You won. <laughs> You've won. He's yours. <laughs> Take the baby or whatever. Yeah. It's a dirty lie. There's yeah. there's no baby in there. There's a bunch of syringes. Which I thought was funny. He's got like a bundle of syringes instead of a baby, and he jabs it into Michael and he's like, Aah! And they're like syringes, like reanimator yeah. fluid yeah. in it. <laughs> it's like reagent. <laughs> yeah, I would have laughed if it turns out it was like steroids or it was adrenaline or something, and it just made yeah. it more powerful. Did you ever read or hear about how uh, Halloween 4, like John Carpenter's version of it, Michael grows to be like 12 feet tall? Oh shit, like a super shredder? <laughs> yeah, he grows like really big. Some sort of um, mutagen? Yeah, that would have been great had he done that in this one. 
he becomes like a kaiju monster. Like he's like, gong, gong, gong. Maybe the uh, the Super Freddy uh, scared him away from doing that in this yeah, one. Like, oh, it's already true. been done. <laughs> Uh, he injects him with this liquid and then Tommy just beats the shit out of him with a lead pipe. <laughs> yeah. He really wails on him. Yeah. Like kills him. Well, supposedly, right? Yeah. He beats the hell out of him. So Tommy and Kara get in a car. Oh, and this is where Loomis they're... comes in. He gets Kara and, uh, Tommy and the baby to like safety. And that's the last we see of Loomis. Well, well kind yeah. Of. Cause well, Tommy and Kara and the children are all leaving. And Tommy says to Loomis like, Hey, you, uh, you should come with us. And Loomis is like, no, I have some. Um, things to uh, have unfinished business or something. Yeah. Yeah. And then it cuts to, uh, then the, they leave. Right. And Loomis is left there alone. And then it cuts to Michael's mask, just laying on the floor of the sanitarium and Loomis like screaming in the back. Ah! And that's it. Yeah. Ew, that's ew. the end. <laughs> but let's talk about the producer's cut real quick. I'm going to, okay. br- I'm going to breeze through this. Yeah, yeah. So after being abducted, this is the alternate ending. This is the original ending. After being abducted, Kara wakes up and she's strapped to an altar and Wynn is conducting a ceremony um, of so- of sorts. And several of the Haddonfield residents are there and they're all like part of this, right? Oh They've my all like, God, they're all in the been- cult. Yep. Michael is there to kill baby Steven who is his biological child as a result of raping Jamie. Gross. Yeah, I don't like that. After which Danny will become the new thorn bearer and begin his own killing spree by sacrificing Kara. Tommy intervenes and uses runes of light (laughs) to stop Michael in his tracks as Loomis helps Kara (laughs) and the children escape. (laughs) After... The others leave. Loomis returns to the sanitarium where he finds what appears to be Michael lying on the ground. Upon removing the mask, however, he discovers that Michael switched clothes with Wynn and has escaped. Wynn passes on the role of Michael's guardian to Loomis, who screams in despair upon seeing the thorn tattoo symbol appear on his wrist. Oh, my God. Loomis what a no. fucking dumb ending too they're equally as dumb so anybody yeah. who's like oh the producer's cut's much better you're dumb no dude because i remember i bought the producer's cut because i had heard it was so much better and then i watched it and i was like and i remember at the time this one it had been a while since i had seen it and i was like i don't think this one is any better <laughs> i was like in fact i think this might be worse yeah, well, and the thing about the producer's cut is the the kills weren't um, as there weren't as many, right? There weren't as many, and there weren't at, they weren't as graphic. Like the head, the guy's head blowing up doesn't happen in the producer's cut. Yeah, and that's one of the only things this movie has going for it is the kills. Yeah, yeah. So this was my first time seeing it. I'm gonna give this movie. This movie's pretty bad. Like yeah. it's pretty. I went in there with an open mind to going. Okay, I haven't seen it. Everybody said it's bullshit. I'm gonna go in there thinking I'll like it. Yeah. What, what, real quick, what'd you get? Part five? Do you remember? Half a pam. Half, half okay, a pam. Okay. Four, I said. It's just incoherent. This movie. Yeah, like it is, we yeah. ex- we went through. It took us a while. Well, plus we had stoppages and everything. But it took us a while to go through all this stuff. And I understand there was a lot of post production issues and reworking of the story and there's the producer's cut and all that sort of stuff but we only have what was released to go off of that's that's what i'm going on and this movie is a stinker (laughs) it's is it as bad as halloween resurrection no okay i know we we never reviewed that movie but that movie is the worst i've only seen that movie one time and it was at the theater and it was really bad it's the worst i tried watching it uh not that long ago because i was like oh i'm gonna give it another shot and I got five minutes into it. I'm like, this movie fucking sucks. <laughs> but this movie, uh, Halloween 6, Curse of Michael Myers, it's bad. And anyone who says that they like this movie, they're just saying that just to be quirky <laughs> and different. Because this movie sucks. It's about as good as Halloween 5. Uh-huh. However, I would put Halloween 5 like slightly ahead of this. Okay. Only because... Although it sucks, at least the story is somewhat more coherent in Halloween 5. And the acting's not as bad in Halloween 5 as the acting in this movie is pretty atrocious. It is. But that being said, it gets, still gets half of Pamela okay. Borges' head. I'm not going to give it zero yeah. because zero is going to be Halloween Resurrection. We'll get a zero <laughs> probably. But it gets half. Cool. Yeah, we're on the same page, man. Um, I put this one neck and neck with part five as well. I would probably Mm -hmm. actually lean a little bit the other way. I think this one's a little bit better, but only because this one actually has kills, like which is what I want in a Halloween movie. True, true. Where the kills are super like few and far between in part five, and most of them are off camera. Like this one's actually got some gore. So overall, I find this one, even though the story 
makes way less sense than part five, which also doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I found it more entertaining. And I think uh, like if I was going to watch one over the, uh, or the other, I would probably watch six again before I would watch this. That said, I'm not watching any of them again anytime soon. <laughs> ever. Ever. Yeah, or ever. ever. So I think I went one on part five. So I'm going to go yeah. one on this one. Okay. So that's overall 0.75. Yeah, we put it right there with... Uh, it, it's it, bad. It, it's bad. Five and six are just awful. Five, yeah. six, and eight. And you know what? Halloween H2O is really not that good either. Talk about a movie with no kills. Yeah, I don't remember that one all that well. I caught part of it on TV not too long ago, and I was like, this movie's not very good. H2O? Yeah. Yeah. No. There's that whole beginning scene with uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt mm-hmm. um, and some other kid and the nurse, nurse uh, whatever her name is. Yeah. There's that whole beginning scene where there's like that, those kills happen. And then it's like a long time before the next person. I don't dies. remember very much about it at all. And then only two more people die after that. Well, Adam Arkin dies too. So three mm. more people. Yeah. That movie sucks. Yeah. I don't know. Everybody was excited about it because it was like, Oh, Jamie Lee Curtis is back. She's coming back. It's Josh be good. Hartnett needs to comb his hair. Yeah. The chick <laughs> oh, yeah, from Dawson's really Creek. Bad that movie. <laughs> Yeah, LL Cool J. Yes. This movie's awesome. <laughs> that movie sucks. But it's not as bad as Halloween 6, The Curse of Mike Mike. There's really not... Like, if you if you go through the Halloween movies, just kind of put a pin in the Halloween... Just to wrap everything... Not put a pin in it. Just to kind of wrap everything up it. with the Halloween... Put a yeah. bow on it. Thank you. To wrap everything up with my Halloween thoughts, Halloween 1 is the best. Yes. Halloween 2018 is probably second best. Yeah, yeah, probably. That or Halloween three. I got a soft spot for that one. Well, I we're just talking, talking Michael, Michael Myers. Michael Myers. Yeah, Let, let's let's take a look at the old Swearwolves website here. We're which talking you can still. Uh, yeah, just the Michael Myers ones. I go part one and then twenty eighteen. Yeah, so the Michael Myers ones. I gave uh, Halloween original five, Halloween twenty eighteen four. You gave it five and four and a half. Halloween two. I gave two, four and a half. Yeah, you gave two. That's a little generous, but okay. No, not two. You gave Halloween 2018. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's what I meant. That's that's generous. That was nice of me. (laughs) Halloween two, you gave two and a half, and I gave it two. We didn't like that one. It was all right. It's all right. But Halloween ends and Halloween kills, we we gave better than Halloween two. So we're going to go Halloween, Halloween 2018, Halloween kills, Halloween ends. If you're going by the swearwolves, that's that's the order. All right. Yeah, I'm good with that. And then H2O Resurrection, Rob Zombie's Halloween, and Rob Zombie's Halloween Two. Like I haven't seen those movies in a long time. I know I liked Rob Zombie's Halloween, so I'd probably put that ahead of the Halloween Four. Yeah, I probably would too. And I haven't seen Rob Zombie's Halloween Two in a long time, but I'm going to rewatch that one soon. I remember it's it's not very good, but there's that opening hospital scene that's pretty fucking awesome. There is, but a lot of people... But that movie's a mess. This, this is one of those movies that everybody's like, it's it, it holds up. It's good now if you go at it with a different attitude. And I really liked Halloween Ends, which is kind of like that also. It kind of mm-hmm. swerves to the left. It zigs when you thought it was going to zag. And... Um, I actually really liked Halloween Ends, so I'm going to try watching Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 again and give it good luck, an open mind. Yeah. But let me just say this. Michael Myers, much like a lot of these franchises, the character is iconic. Oh, absolutely. And so if you're going to grade the character, he's probably, scary-wise, he's he's up there. with like He's one or two. He's the boogeyman. Yeah. Because it's the mask, it's the overalls, it's just the whole atmosphere of him yeah. is better than the... He's, the sum of the parts is greater than the parts themselves. Yeah. Agreed. If you have any thoughts on Michael Myers or Halloween 6 that you would like to share with us, you know, you can. I don't know. We won't. We probably won't read any of your thoughts. <laughs> so, <laughs> Brett's completely checked out. Call us. That's probably the best way to contact us these days. Just, <laughs> yeah, just, just a, mo- a voicemail at 623-282-1851. And especially because as we're coming across our last episode, like if you leave us voicemail messages, 
we're gonna we'll play those. We'll play those on on upcoming yeah, shows. Sure. You can tell us how much you love us. <laughs> There's a lot of people from overseas that listen. I know. And if we don't play any, that just means it was so overwhelming. We got so many that there just wasn't time. So we just didn't yeah. play any of them. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so for the Swear Wolves this week, I'm Brett. I'm David. E ooh ooh, e ooh ooh, e ooh ooh. So far, uh, I feel like our delay is good. Yeah, no one's home. Okay, so, so I'm not I, picking up a whole lot of <laughs> lag or yeah, freezing. I'm going to actually go into airplane mode. Yeah, lock everyone out. Yep. No one's allowed in the house until nope. we've we've completed, <laughs> until we've reached completion. <laughs> uh, 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 Brett, it's Dr. Loomis. Can you hear me? Fuck. Oh, there you are. I got you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Could you hear me trying to talk to you? No, I couldn't. Oh, I couldn't hear you. I was... Um, I it was it was on my end. Did I lose you okay. again? Fuck. Oh, Brett's gone. Brett has left the meeting, and it's just me now. And now I must wait. Welcome back. Thank you.